college student Brittany McWilliams has started coughing up live worms. I saw it moving. They look to me like maggots. Horrified, Brittany calls her mother, Doris, who is a nurse. She was almost hysterical. In the 10 years I've been a nurse, I have never heard of an incident of anyone coughing up any worms. After a six-month odyssey across South America, newly engaged Adam Spencer has returned home to Veneta, Oregon, with a massive wound across his face. And it seems the medicines he's taking are powerless to stop it. I felt like my body was breaking down. His wound had grown to about two inches. It was really scary. Adam and Shaylin visit infectious disease specialist Dr. William Muth of Samaritan Infectious Disease in Corvallis, Oregon. Adam presented with a disfiguring sore on his cheek. There are a number of infections that could have been, but the fact that Adam had this rather dramatic lesion on his cheek and he had spent time in South America made me think that this could be cutaneous leishmaniasis. Cutaneous leishmaniasis is a disease caused by an organism called leishmania. Leishmania is a single-celled parasite that enters the body through the skin. The body sends immune cells to attack the parasite, but the parasites fight back, penetrating the immune cells, feeding off of them, and then reproducing inside them. As the parasites multiply, they devastate the surrounding tissue, causing hideous sores on the skin. I'm a young guy, and to really just get stopped in your tracks by a microscopic parasite, I was worried about how far it would go. Dr. Muth continues to examine Adam and encounters something disconcerting. Adam also had a swollen lymph node on the right side of his neck, not too far from the skin sore, and that itself could indicate that this infection was spreading. The doctor looked in my throat and he thought that I might have mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis is a rare form of the disease that destroys the soft tissue of the mouth, nose, and throat. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis can be very disfiguring, and when it's not treated, it could be deadly. We had already waited so long to get an answer of what this was, and now knowing that this is a fatal parasite, I was really, really scared. I became really afraid that it was already strong enough that I could die from it. It was really scary because this would travel to his nose, to his eyes, and eventually kill him. The thought of him dying it was really terrifying. Before they can prescribe the proper medication, doctors extract a sample from the inside of Adam's throat and send it to the Center for Disease Control to confirm the exact species but the results can take weeks. During this time, Adam keeps a video blog. I feel tired a lot, uh, so I'm excited to go to bed, but then it kind of sucks because I have to pick the oozing around it, and then it might ooze it during the night. And I, just, I haven't been sleeping well. His face just got so much worse. The wound was growing faster and faster. It was oozing constantly. It affected every part of his life. He couldn't eat. He couldn't breathe without pain. It was really, really scary. I was worried, was my face ever going to look the same again? There was, there was nothing I could do. I was essentially helpless, waiting for the treatment to begin. To cheer himself up, he plays soccer with his friends. I was just playing soccer and I tried to trap it and there's a bounce stop and uh, got hit in this region here and uh, it's kind of coming out now. A week later, Shaylin discovers something new. Two new lesions popped up on his back, so we knew that it had gone systemic. It was a really, really hard time. Every time I looked in the mirror, I couldn't believe what I saw. I was beginning to worry that I would maybe lose the ability to talk as well. This parasite had taken my dreams and stomped on them. A week later, the CDC confirms the diagnosis. 
Adam does have a severe case of mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. So they permit Adam to take a powerful drug called amphotericin B. At this point, I was just ready to just get rid of this. I want to start treatment. I've been waiting long enough. Adam begins a 21-day intravenous treatment. But how exactly did Adam contract this deadly parasite? The leishmaniasis parasite is transmitted by a tiny insect called a sandfly. The leishmania parasites mature in the gut of an infected sandfly. And when the sandfly bites a human, it regurgitates those parasites into the skin. When an uninfected sandfly bites an infected host, the cycle continues. Leishmaniasis is mostly found in Asia, the Middle East, Southern Europe, and South America. I was photographing along the riverbank back when we were living in the Peruvian Amazon. I was getting bitten by dozens of sandflies. The bites were noticeable and itchy for about three days, and after that, we kind of forgot about it. This was the day I'd gotten leishmaniasis. Then, after five days of treatment, Adam notices an improvement. My throat had completely healed, which was just so relieving. I could eat again. I mean, I could breathe and I could talk. I felt so happy for him that he finally had a positive result and something to show that he was beating this parasite. 11 days later, things are looking up for Adam. I have five days left of the 21-day treatment, and now I feel like it's, it's reverting finally. And it just feels good to, like, feel the improvement and to not feel sad about having a big, puffy face and, like, feeling swollen and having a sore throat. Um, so I feel more productive, I feel more social, and uh, just doing a lot better and happier. Yay! But Adam's battle is far from over. I'm still dealing with the parasite today. We had to put the wedding plans on hold because I had a flesh-eating parasite on my face. So we're going to get married next summer and just hope that the wound will be healed, but I'm going to have a huge scar. Scar or no scar, he's the most handsome man that I know. Shilin's been incredibly supportive throughout the whole process. As far as how I look or how I'm going to look with the scar, I know that that's not gonna affect Shailen whatsoever. To prevent infection from leishmaniasis, travelers to Asia, the Middle East, Southern Europe, and South America should use DEET-based insect repellent to avoid being bitten by sandflies. Three days after coming down with what she thinks is the flu, college student Brittany McWilliams has started coughing up live worms. I saw it moving. They look to me like maggots. Horrified, Brittany calls her mother, Doris, who is a nurse. She was almost hysterical. In the 10 years I've been a nurse, I have never heard of an incident of anyone coughing up any worms. At Doris's insistence, Brittany and her roommates head straight to the emergency room. I just remember thinking that's not right. People shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. I started praying. I just started saying, you know, Lord, whatever's wrong with me, please help me. As soon as they arrive at the hospital, Mary and Nicole check Brittany in. I went to the bathroom in the hospital because it was hard trying to keep swallowing. So I went in, I spit in the bathroom. In the toilet, Brittany comes face to face with her worst fears. I look down and I see about 20 inch long white worms in the toilet. I didn't know what to do. I was just really, really scared. After the girls tell the nurses about their ailing friend, Nicole goes to check up on Brittany. She was kind of leaned over like she was going to vomit. I actually saw the worms coming out of her. That was pretty scary for me. And I kept saying, this is not ending. Something's really wrong. As soon as I saw the worms in the toilet, I wanted the nurses to see because I knew that they were skeptical. So Nicole takes matters into her own hands. The worm was sitting down at the very bottom of the toilet bowl. I took the cup and I put it down 
by the edge of the water and I took the spoon and I tried to make the water go so that the worm would float into the cup. Eventually I was able to get the worm into the cup. After I collected the worm, I took the worm up to the nurse's station. A doctor immediately calls Brittany in and examines the specimen. She had never seen a case like that in Brian. Without lab results, the doctors can't make an official diagnosis. They prescribe Brittany a drug that they hope will kill the worms, but they can't be certain. After being done with the doctor, I saw my mom, and I was just really relieved, and I gave her a hug, and I told her, I'm glad you're here. Brittany was very scared. She started crying at that point, and she just grabbed on me and started hugging me. Brittany heads home with her mom, but she has more questions than answers. I wanted specific answers, like, when will they be gone? How long is this going to last? Am I going to be OK? So leaving there and not really having a diagnosis was nerve wracking to me. It was so scary. Two days later, Doris takes Brittany to her primary care physician. When she did the assessment on Brittany, she did hear some congestion in her lungs. She also heard some faint wheezing. The doctor left the room for a few minutes, and then she came back with a book and said, I think I know what you have. She said that what I had was a worm called Ascaris. Ascaris is a roundworm that infests the human digestive tract. When eggs are swallowed, they hatch into microscopic larvae that make their way from the small intestine into the bloodstream. There, they are carried to the lungs, where they climb up the host's airways and are swallowed back into the intestines. Here, they reach maturity and breed. Usually, adult worms stay in the digestive tract, where they can live undetected for years. But in Brittany's case, it's likely her fever made her body too hot for the worms. In this inhospitable environment, these Ascaris worms head for the nearest exit, crawling up her esophagus and into her airways, triggering her cough. My biggest fear was that I was going to keep coughing up worms. In extreme cases, Ascaris worms can cause secondary infections and intestinal blockages, which can be fatal. But when and how did the worms get inside Brittany? The doctor started asking me all these questions about if I had been out of the country, but I had never left Texas. And he started asking me what I like to eat, just to try to see if something that I ate could have given me the worms. I told him I had been eating a lot of salads. He said, well, I bet you got them from someone illegally fertilizing their salads and that you didn't wash it good enough. Ascaris thrives in human feces, which is sometimes used as fertilizer. Although it's illegal in the United States, accidentally contaminated or imported produce can carry the parasite. The doctor prescribes a powerful antiparasitic drug called albendazole that paralyzes the worms and prevents them from feeding, starving them to death. After three weeks, Brittany is parasite-free. But soon after her recovery, she is diagnosed with asthma. Brittany has adjusted her lifestyle uh, to where now she knows that she can't run like she used to. I feel blessed that I only have asthma because it could have been so much worse. Four-month-old Jack Kozowski is suffering from a deadly neurological condition called hydrocephalus that is making his brain swell. Now, doctors suspect Jack may have contracted the condition from his mother. So I decided to order a blood test on both Nicole and Jack to make sure that we weren't missing anything. I was surprised and shocked that they wanted to test my blood when Jack was the one that was sick. Two days later, the results come back. Nicole's blood work showed that she was infected by the parasite Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is a parasite that affects the central nervous system. I was devastated. Inside Nicole's body, the Toxoplasma parasites traveled through her umbilical cord and into Jack's developing body. 
The parasites were able to infect his brain and eyes, where they reproduced and destroyed the surrounding cells, leading to his blindness and hydrocephalus. I felt like I should have somehow prevented this from happening, to prevent the pain. According to the CDC, more than 60 million people in the U.S. may be infected with the Toxoplasma gondii parasite. But most of those infected don't suffer serious symptoms because the immune system is able to keep the parasite in check. However, when a pregnant woman becomes infected with the Toxoplasma gondii parasite, the unborn fetus with its still developing immune system is at particular risk of contracting the infection. The parasite was continuing in its attack on Jack. This parasite is a killer. I wanted to kill the parasite myself because you know it's attacking at that very moment even. Jack was my everything. He made me who I was. Without him, I wouldn't have been a mother. To kill the organisms, Dr. Matz puts Jack on a course of powerful antiparasitic drugs. I was afraid my baby was going to be deaf, dumb, and blind. For 10 days, Nicole and David hope and pray that the drugs will take effect. But then they notice a small breakthrough. The medication had kicked in. He was finally able to laugh with us, smile at us. It was incredible. Something in that little body has told him, all right, let's keep going. And he did. He's the one that didn't give up. Doctors send Jack home to continue his recovery. And 10 days later, on February 14th, Nicole and David receive an unexpected Valentine's Day present. I had Jack in my lap, and I had a silver spoon in front of me. And he looked down at the spoon and took his little hand and picked it up. He saw it. I was so excited that finally, finally, he was able to see something. I was happy that he could grab the spoon, his motor skills, and vision in one swoop. So that was really big. Today, Jack Kozowski is a thriving 14-year-old and even receives straight A's in school. But the parasites have made a lasting impression. I do have less vision than most people do but I get used to it, and I just live on with my life. Jack is legally blind. He has very limited vision with some scarring from the parasite. So how did Nicole initially contract and pass on the toxoplasmosis infection? The Toxoplasma gondii parasite most commonly cycles between rodents and cats. Humans often get infected with the Toxoplasma parasite through contact with contaminated cat feces. But eating undercooked meat, especially pork, venison, or lamb, can also lead to infections. And Nicole remembers a particular moment when she may have been infected. At the end of my first trimester of pregnancy, David and I went out to dinner, and I ordered lamb, rare, and I never imagined that eating something could cause such awful consequences. I felt like it was all my fault. I don't think she did anything out of the ordinary that brought this on. I don't blame her a single bit. But the toxoplasma parasite still poses a risk. Jack will always have this parasite living inside him. If the parasite reactivates in Jack's brain, we're not sure of how much damage it can cause. But none of this stops Jack from having a good life. I try to make every day as fun as I can make it. I go down with my dad to Breeley Field, and you know we just have a blast and just you know watch a baseball game. Knowing that there's no cure for the parasite is a difficult thing, but he's got a good attitude about it. It helped me deal with him having it. Jack is the bravest person I know, because he wakes up every morning knowing that things could be different. 
Bis bald.